whenever things start to come together, we have a little bit of a problem here. Something else has a way of falling apart. I don't know how to fix it. No good. Yeah, really bad. But our curse is also our blessing. A hair out of square, if you will. And we'll do whatever it takes to get it right. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. Feels real nice. <laughs> What's up guys and good morning. We have some really exciting things happening today. Um, we also have a little bit of bad news. So I'll start with the good news. And that is that our roof panels are being delivered. The driver is on his way right now. He's gonna call me in a minute when he gets to the bottom of our mountain. I'm gonna give him instructions on how to go the life route instead of the death route because <laughs> there's a death route and right now there's a lot of ice. So hopefully he calls me before he ends up on the death route and the panels are going to get delivered this morning and hopefully by the end of today, that roof over the living room should be ready for snow. I'm really, really excited about that. Now for the bad news is uh, yesterday, I think I broke one of my fingers and when I say broke my finger, I mean I tore ligaments in the joint on my finger so my finger doesn't really work. And then I also have this injury in my opposing elbow that has been causing me trouble for like the past two weeks. So this arm isn't really working, this hand isn't really working, and I think I tore a ligament in my knee yesterday also. So needless to say, I'm from like- From where? It's from jujitsu. Okay? From jujitsu. All right, rain down on me, everyone. Tell me it's a bad idea. Jujitsu is supposed to make you stronger, not supposed to hurt you. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't me. know where you're getting your information from, but that's not true. <laughs> Anyway, I can't really walk very well. I, I did all of this yesterday morning and then I worked all day yesterday and I was like, oh, my finger kind of hurts and oh, my leg feels a little weird. And then I woke up this morning and I was like, I can't move my finger or my knee and my other elbow hurts pretty bad too. So I'm gonna be bundled up and uh, doing as much as I can, which is probably not going to be much, but I'm gonna be directing and making sure everything happens correctly. And hopefully, with Brandon and Grayson's help, we'll be able to get this roof on today. Uh-oh. Did you spill? Yeah. Some Cheerios? Mm. That's okay. What are you drinking? Milk. Milk? Mmm. Do you like milk? Mm-hmm. Mm flatbed truck. Oh. False alarm. Not yet. We were just looking the wrong direction. Whoa. Yay! This is awesome because we were really nervous that the driver might not make it or might have some problems trying to get up here because the roads are clear, but in the mornings, they're a little bit icy. He actually did end up coming the death route, which is a little nerve wracking, but he made it and that's all that matters. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good, good. Yeah. thank you for coming up here. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. A lot of these forklifts will turn sideways and drive them. All right, it's worth a shot. We don't know if this is gonna work, but the fact that he just made it to our house is amazing, and the bonus would be if he could get it all the way up on the side of the house, so we'll see how far we can get.
All right, we are making some pretty good progress here. These guys are just getting ready to start screwing in our drip edge that's gonna go on this back edge out here. We're gonna get started with that, throwing the drip edge up, and then once it's up, we can figure out the spacing for our panels, get the first one cut, bend the edge up, and then start mounting the panels. And hopefully the panels are gonna go pretty quick. There's only 20 of them, and I'm hoping that we can get most of this done before all of this right here starts to turn into a big muddy mess because it gets really soupy back here. Without further ado, let's get started. We're running into a little bit of an issue. When you do a metal roof, you wanna take your 16 inch wide panels and you wanna figure out how many panels it takes to get all the way across the roof. And then you wanna figure out if you're gonna have like a scab piece on one side or a scab piece on the other side, you wanna split that difference between either side so that you have symmetrical lines on your panels. And the problem is we're gonna end up with like two and five eighths of an inch gap on each side and it'll be kind of hard to waterproof and a little bit of a pain in the butt. So I think we're actually just gonna have a non-symmetrical roof, a hair out of square, if you will. So we're gonna go ahead and rip our first seam off, go ahead and get the edges bent up and throw the first panel on. Oh, 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 I wasn't thinking. Ow. I haven't really been doing much because my uh, finger is really hurt. And I thought that I could just easily film while Brandon threw me that tape and then I tried to catch it and it basically just blasted my finger. The problem with my finger is that like yesterday, it didn't really hurt at all. And then today when I woke up, I couldn't bend it at all. And now it's like swollen and hurts and now I just brutalized it, so I gotta take it easy or my body's not gonna heal, which is why I'm doing a lot of filming today. And Allie is gone for the day, so it's just me and Brandon and Grayson. And I'm hoping we can get this roof done in time with basically two guys working and one guy watching. All right, one panel down, 19 to go. That one was probably the hardest because we had to fold up a big like three inch lip on one side so the snow like kind of stays in the roof zone because we don't have any end wall flashing right now. But that panel is completely done. It needs like three more screws and we're moving on to the second panel. We're gonna make quick work of this today. For those of you guys that don't know, um, before Grayson lived here in Utah by us, they lived in Wisconsin and uh, he was actually a roofer out there. And the roofing company that he worked for did mainly metal roofs. So he's like extremely overqualified to be installing this metal roof. And I'm like really glad that we have basically a professional here to give us a hand and make sure we're doing everything right. It's been uh, really nice. Grayson's helped out in so many ways, but the number one way is uh, with the metal roof. So grateful to have him around.
Grayson just got through trimming down this last panel to the correct width. Now we just need to fold the lip up all the way along the end, slide it up onto the roof, get it screwed down, and this roof will be ready for snow, baby. Very, very excited. And then I think we actually have a little bit of extra time. It's only uh, about 1.30, so I think we're actually gonna go out and maybe check out the French door. <clears throat> See how difficult those uh, doors are to take off? Because there's no way we're moving those French doors up here fully assembled. They weigh like 400 pounds. It's absolutely incredible. So maybe uh, let's finish this roof and go check out the doors. Well, that is looking extra sharp. I don't know if it's just these panels or because they're brand new or if they're like different than the other ones, but they look extra shiny. Like they are just gonna shed all of the snow and ice and we're gonna have no problems on this roof back here. I'm really looking forward to the next big snowstorm so I can see it come off the main roof onto this roof and hopefully just slide right down onto the ground where I can get at it with the snow blower. But uh, anyway. This is basically done. We've got the roof put on. That's a huge, huge plus. I cannot believe that we got that taken care of. We got the panels delivered up here. So now that that's done, I think we're gonna head out to the man cave and go check out that door and see if we can actually remove the doors from the door frame. No rest. No, oh, no. I've been down so long that my mind can't get no rest. No, no. This ain't easy, darling. Cause the devil was on my trail. Well, we've got one of the doors removed and we can't figure out how to open the second door. This is extremely frustrating. Um, I want to assume that something is malfunctioning, but I don't really know because I've never even seen one of these doors in real life, so I don't know how it work. But I've unlocked it, I've locked it, I've tried to open it in 10 different ways. Basically, we just can't get this door to like separate from the door frame even open it. Once it opens, we can lift it off the hinges like we did with the first one. But we can't get the door to open. I've been running so long that my feet don't work no more. Oh yeah. I've been running. All right, it just took one more try and we finally got the door open, we got it off the frame, and now all we've gotta do is carry these three different pieces individually up to the house and I think we might be able to get the door installed today. say how extremely glad I am that those doors came out of this frame. It's amazing. <laughs> All right, so we have a little bit of a problem here. When you build a door, doors are like six foot eight, which is like 80 inches. And usually rough openings are built to be 82 and a half. So they end up giving you like two and a half inches of room to fur out and shim and do all kinds of things. And with like normal doors, you shim on the sides of the door where like the jam is and where the hinges are. And it allows you to like kind of have some variability. With this type of door where there's a nail fin going all around the outside, this rough opening should have been built basically exact. So that like the window just, or the door just slides into the perfect location. You put all the screws in. And what we're dealing with now is we have this giant gap at the top, this like two and a half inch gap. There's a nail fin up there that's supposed to have lags or screws that come into the, the header or the top plate. <sighs> that is a problem. All 
All right, so the makers of Thermobuck will see this and they will be very upset with us, but we didn't really have a choice. So after we used this expensive, amazing product called Thermobuck, we basically had to shim our, our door opening down an inch and a half with this two by six inside the rough opening. It'll be fine. We can glue it, screw it, tape it, goop it. Like everything is going to seal up just fine and the insulation value is going to be there. And we're, we're bucked out. We're bumped out to the exterior insulation. So it's going to work just fine, but not the way I hoped it would have gone. So now we're going to go ahead and test fit this. And as long as the height matches up and everything's going to be good there, we can get those lags into the top. I'll be happy with it. And then we can glue it and start installing the frame, bring the doors over here and Bob's your uncle. She's snug. It's a tight fit now, huh? Yeah. Hopefully it's not too tight. Hi. How you doing? Good. What do you see? Door trim? It's the door jam. It's the door jam? Yeah, and one of the doors is out here. They're going to get the second one right now. They're going to be fully dried in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, basically. The roof is on. Yeah, it's done. That was so fast. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. Wow, it's a mess back here. Basically we have half of the screws or lags completely installed and I think it's going to be strong enough to at least hold the doors right now. Um, but we want to make sure before all the glue, like the sealant dries, that the doors are going to like hang, latch, function, everything is going to be good. Mm -hmm. Because if we wait for all of the glue to dry and then we try and test with the doors and they don't fit, yeah. we're, we're in big trouble. <laughs> cool. All right. Let's walk around over. Texas Ranger. You can probably get down here. What? Oh my gosh. Oh, that's wobbly. I don't know how to fix it. No good. Yeah, really bad. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, but it looks cool. I bet you guys picked the muddiest day to do this. The, the latch? Just put one screw in. I like that plan. <laughs> one screw to hold the whole door. Yeah. yeah. One screw to rule Push them all. Honestly, if this door even works, I'll be shocked. <laughs> Why would you put that out into the universe? <laughs> Just because we're doing a bang up job here. That's right. <laughs> okay, here we go. You got them under? Yep. Truth. What about the bottom? Is that latched? Uh, I think it's latched. I don't. The bottom threshold isn't mounted to anything, so. If you That's... open it, does it like open it at a forty-five degree angle and let go and see what happens? Oh no, it goes all the way. You got to fix that. There's that. no fixing this one. We have to build a new house. <laughs> <laughs> Stick your head out and say, it's perfect. That's not the truth. <laughs> they look really bad. Really? Yeah, they're like, they're both latching nice. Okay. And probably sealing good, but one is like a half inch taller than the other. Can we finish finessing this tomorrow? Uh, 
Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, we are back at it. It is day two. We are out here trying to get all the tape and all of the goop because guess what? Yeah, you guys guessed it. It's going to snow. And uh, probably like tomorrow, it's going to rain and snow all day. And then this weekend is supposed to be more snow. We pulled both doors off. We pulled the door jam off. We pulled the two by six off. We cleaned off all of the goo, all of the glue, the sealant. And we actually got a smaller a one by material instead of two by material to go above the door because what needed to happen is once we got the door in place, we needed to actually shim one side of the door up because the rough opening is not exactly level. But we couldn't do that because the two by six was making it so that the height of the door was like the perfect size of the door. So it fit in there just right. So we got this one by material. I went ahead and got it completely screwed up here on the top. And now we've got glue all the way around the edge. We're gonna throw our door jam in, get it mounted, test fit our doors, and uh, hopefully this works perfectly and we don't have to keep fooling with this thing because it has been a huge pain. Let's just say that. But without further ado, let's get this door jam in here and uh, give her a test fit. Here we go. Doesn't work. What? All right, we messed it up. <laughs> but we're really, really close, you cool. know? All right. It's like mixing paint one drop at a time. You just gotta, you just gotta slowly wait until you get the perfect mixture. Take 475. It's not funny, Alex. It's pretty funny. <laughs> it's pretty accurate, too. <laughs> Here we go. Look at that! Yeah. <laughs> I hate when doors start swinging after you've opened them to like a certain distance and they like either try to swing out or swing back in. This is absolutely perfect. Even if I put it here. Wow. That's cool. I think it's good. I think it's really good. All right. Guys! I'm gonna... It's official! Yes! I'm not done yet. We are done! We got a tape and goof. And we gotta finish mounting this door. All right. Quick getting ahead of us! I'll get these handles like mounted so that we can actually use this. Heck yeah. Woo, 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 woo. Don't get excited. Don't right. do that. Yeah, we're not done yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is a super oversimplification, but it feels like all we need to do now is like plumbing, electrical, and HVAC, and we're ready for four-way. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what we need to do. I don't know if it's because we've done this so many times already or that we're just like so much more efficient than we used to be, but it feels like we're going really fast. Yeah, it does feel that way. Yeah. We are going fast. We're good at this. We're really good at this. I feel like we should get our drywall delivery now before it snows so we just like have it ready to go, you know? Yeah. Is that overreaching? Yeah, probably. The door is now fully installed, looking fresh. It's nice. I've got it completely mounted. All the screws are fully in. I've got some shims glued underneath the threshold so that it's like nice and supported. Um, there is gonna be some weird transition there when we get our flooring in, but I think we'll be able to hide it pretty well. Okay. So 
yeah, these doors are beautiful. They function great. They're very insulated. And once we get this uh, outside, once the glue all like hardens and cures, we can tape that and get it all flashed. These guys are actually gonna finish uh, taping the seam between the concrete and the building and gooping uh, about shoulder height all the way around. But Allie and I actually have to run because we have a special appointment. We're gonna take you guys with us. So we had a quick wardrobe change. I took a shower, Allie got ready, and we are heading down to a special appointment right now. And let's just start out by saying it's, it's an appointment to go test drive a car. Now, it's a specific type of car. Some people feel a special way about this car. Some people hate it, they love it, it's whatever. Honestly, uh, I drive this Ram TRX and I absolutely love it, but it gets like 11 miles to the gallon, which is probably the worst gas mileage I've ever had in any vehicle that I've driven. This vehicle is exciting to drive. It's fun. It's a really relaxing, nice ride on the way up to our house because it has great suspension. It's an awesome, awesome vehicle, but I'm just so sick of going to the gas station all the time, spending tons of money on gas. So today we're going to go and check out a car that doesn't take any gas. I know that for Trent, going to test drive a car is a lot like going to just look at a puppy, but I promise you, we are just here to look. You can't even buy one right now if you want to. It takes like nine months. Good. But if we decide we like it, then maybe in nine months we'll get a new car. Well, a lot can happen in nine months. So today is just about a little bit of research and exploration. Hi. Hi. How are you? Test drive schedule is at this door. Yeah, come on. Perfect. Is it a car or is it a lifestyle brand? <laughs> Industry standard. Oh, oh out if you nice. drop something. Uh, there's three different light levels. And then it just lives right there when you're not using it. That's nice. <laughs> wow, this is pretty looking. You already love it. It's got some curb appeal. This is yeah. the green and wood interior. I've been able to drive through all kinds of conditions. Montana, Idaho, Utah. Yeah. I've been really really impressed okay. with how it handles. Yeah, the cool. snow driving is, yeah. is one of oh, the biggest yeah. it's, I, concerns. It's amazing. How many people have you been with that crashed on it? Zero. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> don't, don't, probably don't over a thousand drives. Yeah. They're such capable, safe vehicles that I've never <laughs> really worried. <laughs> I don't know how it'll do on our mountain, like a dirt road okay. it's really steep and windy. So in the winter it's icy okay. and narrow and uh, it's a dirt road so like you get a little bit of traction if it's uh -huh. not super icy but most of the time it's very slow. We're gonna think about it. I would love to know your thoughts. It would be nice to have something with a little bit more interior storage. Right now having two trucks is just overkill, um, but we could really use some more inside space and just a smaller car that's a little bit more maneuverable, that we don't have to spend as much on money on gas. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. It doesn't lose any power compared to the TRX. It's, you know, it's capable, it's fast, it's safe, it has more seats, so. That's kind of like why we're leaning towards this, I think. And uh, 
I'm pretty excited about it. If anyone knows Rivian or Rivian, if you're watching this, I would love to know how you think it will do on our mountain. <laughs> yeah, let us know, please. All right, guys, we have uh, made it back to our house. It was kind of a long day. We actually went and saw Allie's parents, hung out with them for a little bit, spent a little bit of family time. But uh, for the most part, I am just very, very excited with how much progress we have made on the house. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I would, I think we can say we're dried in. We have yeah, like, basically. We have like finishing touches. Yeah. We're dried in, we, have like we a, made it. We have a tiny bit of taping and some gooping, and then we're like 100% dried in. Yeah. So we're basically dried in. We've almost got one complete roof on. We just need the roof panels on the other roof and then all of the trim, but either way, We've been making great progress. We are ready for winter. I mean, we've been saying that for the last like three storms and then they've just been like really small, so. I'll take it, honestly. I know the big ones, I know the big one's coming. Yeah, it's funny, it's starting to feel like, is, does winter happen? Yeah. But um, I feel like I also feel that every year and then every year I'm like, oh, here it is. Yeah, We're it's like, ready. stop, please, <laughs> Yeah. warm up again. But anyway, I'll take this mild weather for as long as possible. Yeah, but anyways. Uh, weigh in in the comments. Let us know what you guys think of the Rivian. If you guys think we should just stick with a gas truck or if you guys like electric trucks or I'd just like to know what people yeah. think and kind of what your opinions are. So let us know in the comments. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys. We love you. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.